What's going on guys? I hope you are all ready because class is in session. I'm gonna need my glasses for this one because today we're gonna be talking about what goes into choosing the right fuel pump and right size injectors for your build. All right, I guess so I'm not gonna have the glasses on. I'm being told that they are going to glare too much. So we are just gonna put them off camera. So before we dive into what actually goes into choosing the right injector and fuel pump for you, we have to go through a little bit of a history lesson back in time to the old carbureted setup. So this is kind of that first iteration and what eventually morphed into what you see today. Now all was good and dandy, but as with anything in life, there was an evolution that was going to occur. Uh, and along with the government regulations and the need for more efficient and powerful compact engines really drove that forward. Now there was a lot of different types of applications that uh, automakers used. Some were not so great, uh, some were better than others. Uh, you may remember the throttle body injecting system, uh, which worked for a little bit, but eventually we landed on kind of that sweet spot with what we see today uh, with the fuel injected setup. So what does the fuel injector do? Well, essentially it's going to completely take out that carburetor and it's going to inject the fuel directly into uh, the cylinder and it's gonna be completely controlled by your car's computer system. Hey guys. Just wanted to take a moment. We were watching through this video and realized I did say some incorrect things and I just wanted to make sure we got that cleared up. So there is going to be fuel injection was actually going to be in uh, the injectors spraying the fuel onto your intake valves and then into the cylinder. And that's not to be confused with direct injection, which is going to bypass the intake valve and go directly into the cylinder. So now that that's cleared up, enjoy the rest of the video. That means there's no more messing with uh, your screwdriver and your uh, fine adjustments on your carburetor to get that perfect mix of air and fuel when you're at the drag strip, even though everybody loved that. All of that is now done through a laptop. Cue the Civic with a laptop meme. So to explain how the modern fuel injection system works, uh, you can think of it like taking a straw sucking up some water and then spitting it into a cup. Again, very rudimentary, uh, but it is how that system is gonna work. In this scenario, you can think of your mouth as the fuel pump and of course the straw as the injector. Now you're going to be limited by uh, the straw with how much water you can actually push through there at a time because of the size of the straw. Similar application on the fuel injectors and of course how much you can actually blow the water out is gonna be your fuel pressure. So when it comes to actually determining the right setup for your car, there's a couple of things that you need to know before you really dive into it. Now, for the purpose of this video, uh, I'm going to cover what goes into it and not so much how to determine it because to be honest, you're just gonna be looking at a bunch of random equations wondering what your X has to do with any of it. So we're gonna save you from that, but if you do have questions on it and you are looking to get the right setup, just give us a call and we can make sure that you're getting the right parts for your build. Starting off with the injectors, a couple of things that you're going to be wanting to know before you uh, start your shopping process. The first and foremost going to be the fuel base pressure of your car. Now there's gonna be a couple of different uh, fuel pressures that you find. For most of the vehicles that we work with here at MA Performance, more of those four cylinder and six cylinder turbo applications, it's gonna be right around that 43.5 to about 45 PSI. And that's what most tuners are gonna be accustomed with as well. If you do happen to have an older application, of course, there are gonna be some different variables. So again, just make sure you're checking with your tuner or give us a call. Looking at that base fuel pressure is gonna give us the baseline for how much fuel pressure is needed to essentially allow the vehicle to idle. From there, depending on if you have a naturally aspirated engine or a boosted engine, your fuel pressure needs will change slightly. Of course, if you do have that naturally aspirated engine, you're not going to need quite as much fuel pressure to keep up with your power level. If you do have a uh, turbocharged or supercharged application, you're going to want to ramp up your fuel pressure as your boost increases. Now, there's going to be a bit of debate on what is going to be the best suited for you, but for a general consensus, you can see right around that one PSI of boost equals about one PSI 
of fuel pressure as well. So again, if you're running 20 pounds of boost, you're gonna want an additional 20 PSI of fuel pressure on top of that base level. So you'd be at 63.5 in this application. The other thing to take into consideration is going to be the number of cylinders that your application has. Generally speaking, the more amount of cylinders, the less fuel pressure you're going to need per cylinder to make the same amount of power. The best way to look at it is just gonna be more surface area overall because you have additional cylinders for that fuel to go into. So therefore, if you have a six or even a V8, uh, you're not going to need quite as much fuel pressure per cylinder. Uh, the next thing that you're probably going to be looking at is how much horsepower you're trying to make. Now it is important at this step that you really determine it based off of either crank horsepower or wheel horsepower, because each of those numbers are going to play in a little bit different. So again, just make sure however you're calculating it, you stay consistent. In general, we'd suggest going more with the crank horsepower numbers, just because it's gonna make things a little bit smoother in there. Pretty much the last thing to take into consideration as far as injectors go is going to be uh, your injector duty cycle. What this basically is, is going to be the amount of time that your injectors are open versus closed. So if you have an injector duty cycle of say 50%, that means that your injectors are an equal amount open as they are closed. An ideal range for the duty cycle is gonna be between 85 to about 90%. Now again, some tuners will give and take on that, but usually you wanna stay within that 90 uh, and max out around that 95 uh, duty cycle range. That's going to ensure again that your injectors hold up over time. Now, that we've got all that fuel going into the cylinders, we need to talk about how we're actually gonna get that fuel to the injectors. And that's where the fuel pump comes in. Now again, this is gonna have kind of its own set of math equations to determine which is gonna be correct, but there is gonna be, again, a couple of main variables that go into it. The first piece is obviously going to be the fuel pressure, stemming directly from the injectors as well, because you need to know how much fuel pressure you need at the front of the car for your application and power levels to determine how much you're actually gonna need to be pushing from the back. Going back to power levels, uh, we do have to take into consideration the horsepower that the car is going to be making. Obviously, you do need a certain amount of fuel to make that power level. A general rule of thumb, roughly 10 horsepower is equal to about 2.64 liters per hour. Now, this is what you're gonna see on most pump manufacturers, uh, marketing or product listings, or even on our own site. And this is gonna tell you what that pump is capable of keeping up with. So again, you want to make sure that you're doing those calculations. If you have a 500 horsepower car, again, you wanna do the same math uh, that I just described. I'm not gonna do it in my head because it's not going to work out. The last thing that we need to take into consideration is gonna be the voltage at the pump. Because it is powered by an electric motor, we need to take into consideration the amount of power that's actually coming from the car and the alternator to the pump. Uh, most cars output are gonna be between 12 and roughly 13.7 volts. Uh, you want to double check with your specific application to see what your system is running. Why this is important is because when the car is at idle, it's typically gonna be right around that 12 volts. And as you're driving the car, it usually is gonna spike up to about that 13.5. Now, as that car is running and you're making boost and you're getting all that fuel through your fuel injectors, your pump is also going to be experiencing kind of diminishing returns. And what I mean by that is, as you start to increase that fuel pressure, you're gonna see your liters per hour start to drop. So as we increase the pressure in the fuel system, you're going to see an inverse effect on both the voltage as well as the gallons per hour. So some of you might be asking yourself, well, what about ethanol? And that's a good question because ethanol is gonna require more pressure to reach the same thermal capacity as gasoline does. What that means is that you're going to need to increase your fuel pressure even more so than you would with regular pump gas, uh, and typically it's gonna be about 30 to 35% more than you normally would. This means that you have to take that into consideration when you're looking at both your fuel pump as well as your fuel injectors, because 
If for example, you're looking at a set of 1100cc injectors for your Evo and you're running pump gas, they may just be fine. However, if you also plan on running ethanol or at some point in the future would like to, you might consider bumping up to a 1300 set that's gonna give you that additional 30% of fuel pressure that you need. So what happens if you choose the wrong fuel pump or get the wrong set of injectors? Well, there's a couple of different things that can happen. Uh, if you get too small of a pump or injectors, you're gonna have fuel starvation. And as we all know, a lean engine is not a good time. What you find with too big of an injector is that you're going to have too much fuel flowing through the injector every single time that it opens. In theory, it doesn't sound like a problem, but when you're trying to idle the vehicle or go through your local Starbucks, you're gonna have issues with the car not wanting to uh, idle or even stay on for that matter and you can run into issues with the car basically flooding. Although it's not exactly the same thing as flooding like you see on a carburetor, the effects can be similar. Uh, you may run into issues, especially if they're severely oversized, of cases of hydrolocking your engine or pre-detonation and even blowing out your spark plug. So, Make sure that you're getting the right size for your application and you'll be well on your way to achieving that horsepower goal that you had set out to. Wait, 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 wait. Before you guys go, I did not cover high pressure fuel pumps uh, and high pressure injectors, which you see in a lot of modern cars uh, today. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and let us know down below what you wanna see in that video and I will see you guys in that video. Well guys, that about wraps it up for everything that I have on both the fuel pump and fuel injectors. As always, if you guys have questions, make sure you give us a call and we'll be certain to help you out. Again, there is also a handful of calculators online, uh, such as Fuel Injector Clinic, Injector Dynamics, Walboro has awesome resources, and there's tons of material out there to help you get the right pump and injectors for your setup. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, leave a comment down below, and until next time, peace. I don't know why I always do that. I don't wanna do that, but whatever, I'm gonna keep it in there.